Good Friday morning, Mount Olive family and friends of Mount Olive. All of you uh, tuning in to watch our uh, devotions. Appreciate each one of you, as I always say, and I, I really mean that. Appreciate each one of you, and I appreciate the kind words that uh, you pass along to us when we see you, uh, that uh, these uh, devotions, that you enjoy them, and that they are help to you. And we appreciate that, each one of us do, I'm sure. Let me share my screen with you here. Not to anyway. It's a little slow today. Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I have entitled this uh, devotion, The Acidity of God. And you say, well, what's that all about? And uh, we'll go into that in just a little bit here, uh, what that what that means uh, to us. But uh, last Friday, as you if you remember and you listened, I, I talked about three attributes of God, his omniscience, his uh him knowing everything, uh, his omnipresence, him being everywhere and in all things. And number three, his uh, omnipotence, uh, him uh, being all powerful. And today I want to talk about another attribute of God, a word that you may not have heard, but it's meaning you you know to, to be true. Um, and uh, Pastor TJ, he used uh, these verses as, his key verse for his message this past Sunday in Acts 17. It says, God, and this is Acts uh, 17, verse 24 and 25, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, nor is worshiped with men's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Uh, and you know, and he used, uh, he, he had this slide also that, uh, that showed an attribute of God, and that's his self-sufficiency. God is self-sufficient. He has no need. God made the world. He's the Lord of heavens. Uh, he's, uh, he uh, dwells not in temples made with hands. He's not worshiped with men's hands. As he doesn't need anything. Uh, and he gives us uh, all the life and the breath and all things. You know, God uh, is self-sufficient in in uh, in everything. So uh, uh, the the acidity of God is a is uh, another very important attribute of God. Acidity refers uh, to God. When we talk about God, it means that His existence is from Himself. He is independent of uh, anything outside Himself. Uh, God is complete uh, and sufficient and, and flawless. He is without any defect or deficiency in and of himself. Uh, you know, God's law, lordship is absolute and independent of anything that he's created. It uh, doesn't uh, matter uh, what, uh, what uh, you know, he is. He is in himself complete. And uh, that's something that we can count on. Now, T.J., he, he uh, had this statement. He said, God needs nothing. Uh, he doesn't need anything or anyone. Uh, and that's true. Uh, no one brought him into being, and his uh, continuance uh, uh, does not rely on any one thing or any one person. Now, we as humans, we have a hard time understanding that. You know, we're a needy bunch. We need food. We need water. We need air. We need heat. We need cooling. We need shelter and on and on. We are totally dependent on someone or something else. Now, he also, Pastor TJ made this comment as well, uh, that uh, God needs nothing, anything or anyone But God does, and he, God does not need me. 
So he does not need anything, any anything. He does he he needs nothing, anything or anyone. God does not need me. Uh, you know that may come to a surprise to some, but God does not need you or I for any reason. He is not dependent on us for anything. God is the fullness of life in and of himself. You know, God was not lonely when he decided to make this world and create man. He did not need our company nor our acquaintance. If God needed us, it would mean that he lacked something. And we know that God has never lacked in anything. Pastor TJ uh, added this in his message. And uh, I like this. He said, but, but God wants us. You know, and this little word, but, that changes the whole conversation. God doesn't need us, but he wants us. Because he says that, you know, we are the object of his love. In John 3, 16, he gave us this verse. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in Zephaniah 3.17, he says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. You know, God doesn't need us, but he wants us. The gospel is all the evidence we need to show that God wants us. He gave his only begotten son for each of us if we will only believe. His grace is a free uh, gift for all of us. <clears throat> Pastor TJ had these verses. He says he reaches for us in grace. And that's Paul was in uh, speaking uh, to the uh, uh, in Athens, to the Athenians in Acts 17, uh, 27 and 28. He says, they that seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not very far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Um, and then in I added these, when he reaches for us in grace, Romans 5, 8. You know, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, God was reaching out for us even while we were sinners. God cannot look on sin. God is holy. He can't, he can't even look on sin. But all the time he was taking his love, that his holy love, and he was trying to give it to us. Even while we were yet sinners, Paul is telling the Romans, that Christ died for us. And then in 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So here he is, Christ, being made sin for us who knew no sin that we may be made the righteousness of Christ in him. You know, God did not need us, but aren't we so glad that he warned us? I hope you've enjoyed this devotion, uh, and I pray that uh, you uh, will think about it and apply it to your heart and your lives. I'll uh, be much in prayer for our, our uh, uh, Sunday service and for Brother TJ that, uh, uh, you know, this uh, he has continued uh, uh, series that we have. Uh, to know God and make him known that that will impact lives. We're thankful for the two who gave their heart uh, to the Lord Sunday. And we pray that there'll be other ones that will do it this Sunday. Be, be much in prayer for those that maybe they'll see their need for a savior and that God will speak to those hearts and prepare them for it. Love each one of you. and We'll see you Sunday morning.